Even in a town as hippie, pot-smoking, granola-eating, witch hippie as Berkeley, California, has people who will stand up to thieves. Thanks for joining us for today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. I can only pick on the Bay Area folks because I am a Bay Area boy, born and raised in the East San Francisco Bay. Uh, lived there until I was 18 years old. So I'm just giving you Berkeleyites a hard time, okay? That's where today's lesson comes from. Today's video is brought to you by the generosity of New Bold Targets. New Bold Targets are self-sealing, reactive polymer targets that act like steel targets for training and practice, but are safer than steel. They allow bullets to pass completely through the target without ricochet or lead splatter. Check out their links in the description and thank them for bringing us today's video. So these folks are all just sitting and enjoying a coffee, doing work. You can see them with their laptops up and all that stuff. It's just a normal day. You're going to see these two guys walk in and come in. They didn't order anything. They asked for a glass of water and then it's going to cut because they hang around for a couple of minutes. And after that, this dude just reaches over, grabs this lady's laptop and runs off. She runs after him, the dude in red grabs the second laptop, but the owner of that laptop grabs a hold of him and they hold him down. They actually got both laptops back, kept that one dude until authorities arrived and gave this uh, clerk who came to help back something as well. And that is where this one ends. Good for those people protecting their property and stopping these thieves. If you want to get better as a self-defender, one of the best ways that you can do that is joining us in our monthly online seminar. There's a link in the description. August 2020, we are talking about legal and moral use of force. So come and join us for that one. We're starting that discussion. It's going to take us more than one seminar for sure. So hit the link, join us for that, and get better as a self-defender. Let's think about lessons tonight. First part of this lesson is paying attention to your surroundings. I don't say situa situational awareness on purpose. I say paying attention. Notice these guys for a couple of minutes have been hanging around. And again, they didn't order anything. They didn't sit down and do what normal people do in a coffee shop. So when we say paying attention, we say that's not only personal awareness. Who am I? What are my risks? What are my capabilities at this time? But environmental awareness, where am I and what is normal here? What's my baseline? And then finally, situational awareness, what's going on in my environment that could change or say that something is not right. And when I see guys that are not doing what I expect people to be doing in that environment, I start paying attention to them and seeing what they're doing. Now then, from the time, we're gonna talk about human reaction here. The first guy, the guy in the gray, um, he grabs a hold of this laptop. Now, how long would it take you to orient on that problem and start to respond to it? We talk about Colonel Boyd's OODA loop, and that's something that we do gotta think about. He runs out the door, and our victim here has right at one second before she starts moving. Very common, I'm not calling her out at all for that, to be able to see, holy cow, that guy literally just grabbed my laptop, now he's heading out the door, I have to respond to that. To orient to that problem probably takes you a half to three quarters of a second, and then starting to respond to it takes another quarter second, and she's sitting in a spot where it's gonna take her a while to get out of there. So sometimes that's maybe a great idea to not be the one who's sitting at the door to protect yourself by putting yourself in a place where you have more response time. Now, she's going to head out the door. Is it cool for her to defend her property with physical force? Unequivocally, yes. That said, you better have more than just attitude. You better have skills and plan. You start running down the street with this guy. He is of unknown capabilities, carrying an unknown number of tools, and you don't know if he's got friends out there. So if you're going to head out there into that, you better be darn sure that you have some significant skills in order to protect yourself and those you love. Because if you don't, you could head out into more danger than just losing your laptop. Now, our secondary guy here, he turned around like he was reaching for his laptop because he saw hers get yanked. And so he's like, hey, man, I'm going to grab a hold of mine. And at that moment, this dude's going to do that. Sometimes luck counts, right? So this bad guy, I think, you know, just attacked at the wrong part of time for him, but a good time for the defender because he's just reaching around to make sure he secures his laptop as well. And that being the case, he had a little bit more advanced notice because he was looking in the right direction at the right time. Sometimes luck counts. Now then, he jumps out and gets after this guy. Again, because he's already primed for action, his response time only takes about a half a second instead of a second. So there's something for us to be uh, thinking about. The fact of the matter is that when you're primed for action, your response time and your response will be better and more definitive than if you are not primed for action. And of course, I think that makes just kind of good common sense. But it is worth seeing that if I have attention paying in my world and if I am seeing what's going on in my world, I'm less likely to be taken by total surprise so I can react faster when things go wrong. Now then, I think it's great that the gray-haired guy in the blue shirt jumps in as well. 
Of course, we always talk about working in tandem and communicating well and making sure that you are doing what you can to make sure that you get this guy out of the fight quickly. So the big thing I want you to see here is pay attention to the hands. Danger always comes from hands. So you wanna do what you can to secure both of the bad guy's hands as quickly as you can. And then this is where some ground fighting skills, some jujitsu stuff like that to get this guy in a spot where he can't hurt you or anybody else around, I think is really wise. Now they're able to hold him until the cops get there. And I think that's a really good thing and, and uh, an awesome part. And I also think, you know, that, that people coming in and, and giving her back stuff and all those things shows this, that people generally are still good and they wanna protect each other. And, and they don't put up with this kind of garbage in our world, even in a place like Berkeley that I think I know that a lot of America says is, you know, kind of a real bastion of the left or whatever, that good, sane, sober, moral people still think that private property is important and protecting people from being stolen from is important. So let's remember that friends, as I know it's a polarizing time in our communities and in our nation. Let's remember to be good to each other and take care of one another as we seek to cover our ASP.